What's up, gangsters? It's a fine day out here at Rube Goldberg Enterprises, and it's time for 10 minutes of technique number two, take 300, I think. I don't know. I tried doing this yesterday. Uh, it was a total fail. And today I just, I, I, I worked a little harder at getting my shit together. I made myself some marks on my bench top so I can get the camera in the right spot and keep my work in the right spot. And hopefully this one turns out a little bit better. Anyway, um, and hopefully it'll be so less than 17 minutes long, which is how long the first 10 minutes of Technique video was. I think this is going to be more like 12. I don't know. I'm getting there. Anyway, this one is about using oils to do washes. So let's get right to it. All right, so the first thing we need to do oil washes is obviously some oils. Imagine that. Now, uh, in this little aluminum dish, I've already got myself uh, some ivory black and a little bit of burnt umber. But this is a good moment to talk for a second about the different types of oil paints. And again, I'm trying to keep this inside of 10 minutes, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But uh, suffice it to say that you should... Uh, man up and spend your money on the good stuff, which is like this, Winsor Newton Artist's Oil Color. Um, you can uh, get different versions of that. There's this Winsor Newton Griffin Alkid Fast Drying Oil Color, which is also pretty good. Um, but the difference between this and this uh, aside from price, is that the Winton, being uh, kind of what's considered a student grade, um, is cheaper because it has a lower pigment uh, ratio. So there's more fillers and other whatever uh, stuff in there. And in my experience, especially with washes, um, th these tend to break up a little bit more. Um, if, if you mix some of this up uh, with a little bit of mineral spirits right next to some of this, you can see what I mean. This kind of holds together better, and, and with washes that's important because you need it to be thin enough to flow well, but thick enough to have the kind of density that will give you that outline of whatever features it is you're washing uh, around. So, um, and look, these are going to last you forever. Um, especially if you mix them with thinners the way that I'm going to show you, um, where you're not wasting much. So I just really think that, that these are the better value. These work okay for straight oil painting, but that's a totally different subject. Now, speaking of thinners, you need some mineral spirits. Now you can use regular old hardware store mineral spirits for washes, but I've taken to using this Winton uh, Sands Odor, which is just an odorless mineral spirits. Um, and that just means basically that it's been refined to have the sulfur compounds taken out of it. And that's what gives regular mineral spirits that uh, sort of diesel smell. And it's good stuff. It also seems to allow the, uh, the materials to, uh, to, to flow a little better seems to be a little smoother. Um, I don't really know how else to describe it, but I like the Winsor Newton Sands Odor. Now I'm gonna get myself a little bit of burnt umber here because I'm gonna need that. And I find that for washes, that the most common colors that I'm using are black, burnt umber, raw umber, um, maybe some um, uh, burnt sienna for rust type tones, but that's not that common for a wash. If you want to do a dusty looking wash, you may want to incorporate some, uh, some raw sienna. That gives you a little bit more of a yellow color. Uh, but you don't need a lot of different colors, and like I said, they'll last you for a long time. Now, the next thing you're going to need, obviously, to do oil washes is something to apply them with. And for that, I really love this uh, Low Cornell Number no. 2 Ultra Round Brush. This is uh, recommended by Mike Rinaldi, and, with, and, and I, just, I really like him for this. And you can see that the tip is very, very... 
pointy and sharp. And that's what you really want for a wash. Um, I think when we were beginners, we thought that you just, you know, to do a wash, you just slathered it all over everything and then came back and cleaned up the excess. But as you move down the road of, of craftsmanship with scale modeling, if you're like me, you refine your techniques and um, you discover that it's just more effective to be more precise. And that's where this pointy little brush really comes in handy because it allows you to place the uh, washes exactly where you want them and you have a lot less cleanup and that's always good. It may take a little longer up front, but um, it, it, it goes faster on the back end. Okay, now here's an interesting thing about these oils. This black has been in here for a couple of days, but because it's in this little aluminum thing, it doesn't leach out the oils the way that it does if you put it on a piece of cardboard like we might do for oil blending work uh, when we're using oils as a, uh, you know, to create like stains and things that we're going to manipulate with a brush. But you can see that even after a couple of days that this is still really fresh. So the way that I do my washes is I don't mix up a whole bunch of it at once. I basically just stick the brush in to the uh, bottle of uh, mineral spirits and then I just drag some uh, paint out of the pile and I just keep sticking my my brush in the directly in the bottle and as long as you don't swirl it around too much you're not going to wash a bunch of paint off into your uh, into your bottle of, of thinner so it doesn't contaminate it much. And with oils, that's not really a big deal. I figure if it gets dirty enough, I'll just replace it. Now you can kind of see how the density is working. This is about right for actually painting, which I might do if I were going to be outlining stuff. But this is about making a wash. Now in this case, what I want is kind of a dark brown kind of oily dirt wash so that's just what I'm trying to mix up there and you can kind of watch the way that it flows around inside the uh, the dish because that's how it's going to behave when you apply it to the model okay so I think I've got about the right density now um, the first thing that I'm going to do, though, is show you um, on this uh, project that I'm working on. I've already applied some washes and some oils on this thing. And this is one of the great things about oils. Uh, you can see right here, I've kind of got a dirty stain here from this, you know, oil oil filler cap and I don't I don't know I kind of just don't like the the tone of it um, and so great thing about oils is that even though this has been on there for a few days um, I can remove it now it's it's uh, gotten itself pretty well stuck on there because it's like I said it's been three or four days but you can see that I've been able to remove some of it um, and I just wanted to show you that I could do that if I kept working at it I would get all of it off of there but I don't really have to care about that because I'm gonna just go over it with this new color and that will solve my problem of not liking it and it'll also give me some tonal variation there that'll be good anyway so um, this is uh, a case where I'm just going to use the wash to kind of create a stain and not so much of a, of a panel line thing. But obviously if this was uh, an aircraft or whatever, then uh, that's what I'd be after is to do uh, like a panel line wash. But you can see that it flows really nicely there. Hopefully uh, this will show up well on camera. Um, I did this one in black yesterday, and I just, I don't know, kind of don't like it, so 
I'm going to come back and redo it with this dark brown. And you can see that with the tip of my brush being such a precise application tool that I can control it so well that it goes exactly where I want it and there's not going to be any need to do any cleanup. See that there? How tight that is around that little cap? And you can see I've got I'm going to get I'm going to have kind of a dark oily look there. And I've already done this over there where the fuel uh the, the fuel uh filler cap is and where the uh the the uh fuel line itself plugs into the tank. You can kind of see that I've already got some washers that I've I've done there. So, super effective. Um, and very versatile and I could change up the density on the fly. That's one reason why I like to just use it in the dish like this rather than mixing up a whole bunch because for example I can already see right here where I tried to apply it as a stain that it didn't really hold as well as I wanted it to so I need it to be a little thicker. So I'm gonna just go back over to my dish and just get some that's a little less reduced and just apply that right there like that. So it's working a little bit more like paint and a little bit less like wash. But now I've got more like what I want and I can even go and get some full density oil right there because it's just sitting right there for me. And that gives me some nice tonal variety that really helps build the realism. So here, let me give you a quicker, close look at that. Nice, oily and dirty. Now, if you look behind there, you'll see where I applied some black around those bolt heads. And you can see that there's kind of a spreading stain from the uh, mineral spirits. Now, that's just part of the deal when you're working with washes on a matte surface which this obviously is. It's not only flat paint, but it's got some pigments on there and um, that definitely mats the surface down. So you're gonna get some of that spreading stain. If you don't like that, it's no big deal because you can just come back and clean that up with some uh, uh, mineral spirit, well, not mineral spirits, but with some more pigment. If you use mineral spirits, you'll wash everything off, including the pigments, because those are on there with uh, pigment fixer. Uh, but anyway, um, I can I can fix that later on by just brushing a little bit of pigment into that area. Uh, but if that bothers you and you don't ever want to deal with that, then you need to be doing your washes on a gloss surface like I have here. This is my Young Miniatures uh, World War II fighter pilot bust that I'm working on. And you can see that he's pretty glossy and that's because I've got a layer of, a generous layer of aqua gloss on him because I knew I was gonna be doing some washes and some outlining to define all of the uh, various uh, color separations, like where the goggle strap goes, because those have to be really good. So I knew, and especially like where the stitching is, like if you look on the top of his helmet here, you can see that I've got a black wash inside of all of that stitching. And I wanted that to flow really well and I wanted it to be really tight. I didn't want to have to do a bunch of cleanup. And so I waited until I sealed all of the oil work that I had done before uh, in with that uh, layer of, of aqua gloss. And that gives me a surface where the washes are gonna just flow very quickly and very tightly and I don't have any cleanup to do. So again, when, when you're working with oil washes, it just really depends on kind of what you're after as to whether or not you, you use a gloss surface or a matte surface. Uh, but there really is no rule. So don't let anybody tell you that you absolutely have to have a gloss surface in order to do oil washes. Okay, I think that's it. Demo done. There you go. I hope you guys found that useful and I appreciate you watching as always. Much love.